every single day I would write, and I, I made sure it was five days a week, I would write one paragraph, at least one paragraph every single day um, for 15 years. Now, oh my gosh. now, not only is that just good for the muscle, good for your writing muscle, uh, but it's good for content. You don't know how many times I've gone back to those 15 years of blogging and found short little stories that have turned into chapters, turned into complete books. Um, and so like, I've got just this treasure chest of content uh, that that I poured my blood, sweat, and tears into for you know a really long time. Did you start your writing journey full of inspiration, but now feel like you've lost your momentum? Do you sit down in front of the page but don't know where to start? Do you wonder if keeping a writing routine will actually ever make a difference? If you felt stuck in a rut, you're in the right place, and this is the episode for you. Hi. I'm Clarissa Mall, and welcome to The Writerly Life, brought to you by Hope Writers, the most encouraging place on the internet for writers to make progress. Here at The Writerly Life, we help you expand your creativity, explore new techniques, and express your hope-filled words in a world that needs them. We'll help you learn to balance the art of writing with the business of publishing, and learn to hustle without losing heart. You have words, and your words matter. And as you write them, you can be you. Boldly, bravely, maybe even a little scared sometimes. You can be you in your writing life. Welcome to the show, friends. Lean in, grab a pen, let's chat. This week's episode aims to help you bust through writer's block and flex your writing muscles again. You'll learn how to commit to your writing and learn three helpful tips to give you direction when you're staring down a blank page. Here at Hope Writers, we don't wait until we feel qualified, picked, or inspired to write. We write now. Much like our guest Carlos Whitaker shared at the top of our episode, we believe that small steps can add up to big progress. Lean in as Carlos tells us more during a recent Hope Writers Tuesday teaching with author and co-founder Emily P. Freeman. I love writing so much that I still, every single day, 30 minutes a day, first thing in the morning, I open my laptop up and I write. I just write for nobody to read. I just write. And so every single day, Monday through Friday, um, I'm writing. And it could be writing about something that happened the day before. It could be, you know, I've got dreams of being a fiction novelist at one point in my life. And so I'm, I, I write like short stories. I, I've got this spy novel that I'm slowly trying to work on. You know, all, the, all the dreams. Oh, yeah. All the dreams uh, happen in those 30 minutes every single day. So uh, I know I've got a lot of other things I've got to do in order to keep the full-time author life going. So I, I can't necessarily spend eight hours a day. I'd love to uh, writing. But for me, that's that's probably the best um, the, the most healing part of my day is when I actually get to do what I feel like I'm best at, uh, which is writing. In the year of the Lord 2000, um, I went to a worship leading conference and I went to a, um, oh my gosh, well, I wish I could remember the exact name of the breakout, but it was like, how to lead your team through blogging in 2000, in the year 2000. And I was like, what's blogging? So um, I, I went to this breakout and I started my very first, it was type pad. I started my very first blog. It was called, you know, if anyone remembers the old days of blogging, I, uh, it was lowswit.typepad.com. <laughs> and I started, I just started to write every single day, like a paragraph. I, I told myself, actually the guy that was teaching the class just said, Hey, um, every day you should just write a paragraph, just, just seven days a week, just one simple paragraph. And I was like, okay. So I started to write a paragraph every single day and I, fell in love with writing. Nobody was reading it, but my mom and my, my aunt Nancy, uh, they're the only people that knew about it. Uh, but for about three years, my faithful readers, my mom and my tia Nancy uh, would read these, you know, me writing about my life, writing about adopting my child, writing about a very memoir-esque. And uh, that, that practice in and of itself, I think began my journey towards, um, towards what I do now. Right now, I, I'm literally a full-time author, which is just crazy. I never thought I would say that. Wow. No doubt Carlos had days during those 15 years when he felt like he had no words left. Mornings where that blank page stared up at him. But did you catch that? All along, he was thinking of his reader. Sure, 
At first, his reader was just himself. But then it grew to be his mom and his awesome Aunt Nancy. But we all need an Aunt Nancy like that, right? And then a little tribe of faithful blog readers. As Carlos committed to daily engagement with his pen and paper, his audience grew. And as he committed to remembering his reader, his writing became better. More focused, more poignant, and more hope-filled for the folks who needed his words. He became the full-time author he hadn't even realized he'd dreamed of becoming. So, what about you? How can you spend your 30 minutes a day writing well? What tactics can you use to keep your reader in mind? Where can you head when writer's block seems to stop up your creativity? In his conversation with Hope Writers, Carlos shares what he's learned about storytelling and writing with his reader in mind. Whether you're just starting out in your writing life or you feel like you've hit the wall, consider these three helpful tips to write through your own roadblocks and come out on the other side. First, as you write daily, remember your reader's pain point. Every story we share needs to be filtered through the lens of our reader. What will they take away from the story that will make their lives better? Do they need a laugh, a life hack, a human connection, a solution to their problem? It's our job as the writer to identify what's bothering our reader and offer them content that meets their specific needs. Authors identify a reader's pain point before writing a book and your daily writing, whether on your blog, in your journal, or on social media, offers an opportunity to practice that same skill in a low stakes environment. Second, as you write daily, guide your reader to the hero of the story. Hint, it's not about you. Readers can be turned off by our stories if we position ourselves as the hero. Rather than being the hero, we are the guide who leads our followers to the real hero. This takes a lot of practice because culturally we're encouraged to present ourselves in our best delight. We're often told that we are the hero of our own story. However, this doesn't connect with readers and comes across as self-serving. In fact, John Steinbeck once said, if a story is not about the hearer, he will not listen. And here I make a rule. A great and interesting story is about everyone or it will not last. A good story balances both the universality of experience with the intimate uniqueness of the reader's need. When we know our reader's pain point, we can use stories to guide them toward a solution rather than presenting ourselves as the solution to their problem. Finally, tip number three, as you put pen to paper each day, write honestly. One way to avoid positioning ourselves as the hero is to approach each story with vulnerability. Readers want to connect on a deeper level with a real person. Social media in particular has been criticized for creating a facade where content creators present only the best, shiniest versions of themselves. If you write for social media, you have the opportunity to use your stories to make that medium better. When we're vulnerable with our readers in these spaces, we give them permission to be vulnerable too. But honesty and vulnerability go much further than what we post online. As you write daily, approach your story from all angles. Think of how your reader will perceive your words. Imagine your reader sitting across the table or hearing your words aloud. How would you write differently if you could look him or her in the face? Vulnerability in writing is far more than tell-all details. It's about the intimate connection you develop with your reader, honoring their intelligence, respecting their wealth of experience, and generously befriending them through your words as you cultivate a relationship of trust. In the end, daily writing is an exercise of discipline. There is no secret formula for eliminating writer's block. Instead, as young adult author Lily St. Croix says, discipline allows magic. To be a writer is to be the best of assassins. You do not sit down and write every day to force the muse to show up. You get into the habit of writing each day so that when she shows up, 
you have the maximum chance of catching her. There are lots of roadblocks that can keep us from engaging in the writing process. You might feel insecure about your qualifications or about your voice. You might be unsure of your idea or feel like your inspiration has run dry. Regardless of what blocks your writing process, you have important words to share with readers who need to hear them. Whether you're writing daily, in your journal, or on Instagram, your stories are worth sharing. I love how Carlos puts it. But I'm curious what you would say to the person who's like, oh my gosh, like that feels like that would take so much time or I feel so vulnerable or like, what do you tell people to kind of get over that? Like, yeah, like, kind of get over that self-conscious self-awareness piece. Any yeah. tips? Yeah. You know, um, a lot of tips. Um, the, the first thing is that what we have to get over is the feeling that we some for some reason we feel like our story day to day isn't worth sharing right. um and that that's the biggest i think um uh roadblock or hurdle that a lot of people that i talk to um you know have to get over when it comes to like yeah like like this me talking into this thing makes me feel no no one's going to watch it nobody's going to care nobody's going to and i'm i'm here to tell you that somebody is going to care um, and that probably more people than you think are going to care. If this episode was helpful to you, just imagine how helpful the entire hour-long interview with Carlos Whitaker would be. Every week inside Hope Writers Membership, there's a new one-hour Tuesday teaching with an agent, publisher, social media strategist, or author like Carlos Whitaker. Hope Writers helps you make progress in your writing life, whether you're writing blogs, articles, on social media, or in a book. If you want to be serious about your words and your reader, we're here for you. For writing tips and encouragement, find us on Instagram at Hope Writers or at our public Facebook page, Hope Writers Community. Last, a final word from author Peter DeVries. I only write when I'm inspired, he said. So I see to it that I'm inspired every morning at nine o'clock. <laughs> I need that little push. Do you? How do you push through writer's block? Write through. You don't need to be inspired or qualified or picked. You simply need to pick a time. For Peter DeVries, it's 9 a.m. What time will it be for you? Thanks for listening, writer friend. As you step into this week, remember to keep writing. Your words matter. We can't wait to read them. If you found this episode of The Writerly Life helpful, be sure to like and comment and subscribe below here on YouTube. If you're listening in, like, rate, and leave a review in Apple Podcast. Your reviews help other listeners and viewers know you've found the content helpful. See you next week, writer friend.